The new South Korean suspense thriller series The Frog starts off with great promise. As a dark and bleak layer of human cruelty can be sensed beneath the shiny gleam of the visuals that are usual in any Netflix production. However, as it tells the story of two heinous crimes in two separate decades and what consequences these acts have, the 8 episode long affair becomes unnecessarily confusing and stretched, keeping the truth away for the later episodes. At the center of the plot is Jon Young Ha, an elderly man running a beautiful holiday rental where a mysterious guest seems to commit a crime during her stay. Overall, the frog is mostly entertaining to watch, although its conclusion is not as satisfying, and the series could have been way more concise in its storytelling. A spoiler warning ahead as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the show. So if you've watched the frog already, let's dive straight into the video. And while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel as it helps us a lot. What is the Netflix key series about? The Frog takes place in a small forested town a few hours drive away from Seoul, where Jong Young Ha has been spending most of his time in the last few years. When his beloved wife had been diagnosed with a terminal illness, Young Ha had moved to the town and bought a beautiful house in a remote and forested area, as per his wife's biggest wish in life. After eventually losing her, the man decided to move away from Seoul and spend most of his time at that town, living in a small house alongside the villa. which he now runs as a holiday rental. His daughter Yoon often asks him to return to Seoul and stay with her and her fiance, but the man is more comfortable running the rental house with his best friend Yoon Che. But Jeon is not very determined in running the business either, and it is Yoon Che who encourages him to advertise about the property on the internet to bring more guests in. Around this time, a young woman named Songa checks in at the property with a young child named Shihyun, who is evidently her son. Although Songa is a bit reserved and slightly mysterious, Yongha does not mind letting her stay. However, he does sense something wrong when she leaves the house early the next morning, leaving behind visible blood stains and an unnatural stench of bleach, and most notably, without her son tagging by her side. The frog also presents another incident from a motel in the same town, intertwining this story with the main narrative, although it turns out to be an incident from more than 20 years ago. Gu Sang-jun ran the Lakeview Motel with his wife Eun-gyung in the early part of the 2000s, running a fairly profitable business at the place. When Sang-jun spotted a car on the lonely road one rainy evening, he acted over-friendly to the driver, a serious-mannered man, and invited him to spend the night at his motel. As it was the off-season and therefore there was no demand at the place, he even gave the guest the room with the best view, despite charging him a nominal fee. However, it all turned Sangjun's life upside down when the guest turned out to be a serial killer named Hyang Chol, and he had even committed the grisly murder of a young woman in that very motel room. Although Hyang Chol is caught by the police almost immediately, the reputation of the Lakeview Motel is harmed beyond repair because of this incident. As a serious threat of crime and violence looms large over both timelines, there is only one common connection between them: a police officer named Yoon Bo Min. Having a knack for uncovering crimes from a young age, Bowman first got posted at Hosu Police Station in the early 2000s, only a few days before Hyung Chol struck at the Lakeview Motel in the nearby town. She witnessed the downfall of the motel and the devastating effect of the murder on Sang Jun and his family. In the present day, she returns to the same station as a high-ranking officer and gradually starts to notice some unnatural behavior in Yong Ha and his mysterious guest Song Ha. Why does Yong Ha not report his suspicions? On the day of Songa and Shion's arrival, Yongha and Yongche spent a significant amount of time playing around with the young boy, without any idea that he was not actually related to Songa. It is only through a brief scene when Shion refers to the woman as "ma'am" and concernedly asks whether his father will be joining them that we get the hint that they are not mother and son. By the time Yongha wakes up the next morning and goes to check the house, his guests have left unannounced, which in itself is quite odd. Yongha is even more surprised to see that the toilet has been scrubbed clean almost to perfection, which no guest ever does at a rented property, and there is also an odd smell of bleach. Finally, a specific record that Songa had borrowed the previous night has a suspicious blotch of blood on it, as if it had been held by someone with bloodied hands. Investigating the matter further, Yongha realizes that the dashcam on his daughter's car, which he had been temporarily using, had perfectly recorded Songa's vehicle. and it is from this footage that he finds a serious piece of evidence while leaving the holiday rental songa was all alone with no sign of shihyun but she had struggled to put in an oddly large and heavy suitcase in the trunk of her car 
Although Yongha does not share this information with anyone, he is perplexed by the thought of what his guest might have done at his house. Upon realizing that two towels were missing from his usual set of laundry, he is almost sure that Songha had killed her own son and then hidden his body inside the suitcase she was carrying. However, despite having evidence to prove his suspicion and coming across Inspector Bowman shortly afterwards, Yongha does not report his suspicions to the police. Yongha starts to keep his thoughts in check simply to avoid any hassle, gradually starting to make himself believe that he does not need to get involved in the matter since it is not hampering his life. In Southeast Asia, there is a saying that when naughty schoolboys throw stones at frogs, the frogs do not react or protest, and instead just question why it was the target of such humiliation. Yongha is like the frog from this saying, and this is also where the Netflix K series gets its name from. He initially starts to avoid going to the police, thinking that he will go to the station the next day. In the next few days though, he decides not to bother with the matter and instead washes away all the evidence from his house. Seasons change and the protagonist happily forgets about the incident, although the image of Songa driving towards his house does haunt him from time to time. Ultimately though, his decision to not act on his suspicions does return to mess up his entire life. Songa eventually returns to the property around a year later as she clearly realizes that Yongha is like the frog from the saying who can be easily manipulated for her twisted and cruel plan. Did Songa kill Shihyun? Songa killing Shihyun initially seems like the most abhorrent act among all crimes, for it is suggested that she kills her own son. Although she is the main antagonist in The Frog, Songa is not as vile as to commit filicide, for Shihyun was not her biological son. The character of Songa is not discussed in depth in the series, and it leaves a lot of window for speculation in that regard. The woman happens to be the daughter of an extremely wealthy and influential industrialist in Seoul, who is powerful enough to have the Hosu police station chief release his daughter after she is arrested. In all probability, Songa had an innate liking for cruelty and violence from a young age, but her father never stopped her and instead made her believe that her actions would never have any consequences because of their family status. Her life took an even worse turn when she got married to a man named Haji Sheikh, as it suggested that he and his family were quite violent and hostile towards her. Songa already thought and acted a bit erratically, and so she became an easy target for abuse and humiliation in the domestic space. However, her criminal thoughts and habit of solving every matter with violence easily outweighed whatever she had to face with Jay Sheikh. Jay Sheikh already had a son from his previous relationship, Shi Hyun, and Songa absolutely refused to step into the role of his mother. She started to believe that Jay Sheikh had married her only so that she could be a mother to his son and that he did not actually love her. This belief gradually made her consider Shi Hyun the one big obstacle in her romantic life, as she felt that the boy actually hated her and wanted to remove her from his father's life. These thoughts took control of Songa's already troubled and cruel psyche, and she made the plan of murdering her stepson. Her vacation at Yonga's holiday rental was intended only as a perfect scenario for the murder. On that fateful night, she drugged Shi Hyun and made him unconscious before strangling him to death and possibly chopping up his body, which eventually led to the blood stains on the vinyl record. Like always, the woman turned to her father for help, and he ensured that her crime was never discovered. Shi Hyun was declared to have died from some other cause, and the body of some other child was given to his family for the funeral. Considering the calm and composed nature of Songa shortly after the murder, it is likely that she had killed earlier as well, and her father had helped her out of any legal trouble. She does gather more confidence after returning to Yongha's life after a year, as she demands that he sell his house to her, or at least let her live there without any rent or official contract. She even goes to the extent of threatening to kill his daughter, and then also gets a police officer named Kim Son Tae involved by faking to be romantically interested in him. When Sonde discovers the truth about her, Songa kills him as well and continues to maniacally remove every obstacle in her way with terrible violence. What was the mystery behind Hyang Chol's murder? When Hyang Chol had been caught after his serial killing spree, the man had shown no remorse or guilt for his actions and instead gloated about the murders as if they were his achievements in life. The psychopath was given a sentence to life imprisonment, which some felt was simply not enough punishment for his crimes. Other than the victims and the families who were directly harmed by Hyang Chul, his actions had terrible indirect repercussions on others as well, especially the owners of the Lakeview Motel. No tourists stayed at the motel even after the police investigation was over, and it earned the name Murder Motel among the locals and others who followed the case. As a result, Sangjun and Eun were driven out of business, forced to try and sell the motel and look for other jobs. 
They were secretly ridiculed at every job though, as if unknowingly sheltering a serial killer was a grave crime they had committed, and this ruined their personal lives as well. The couple separated, with Ungyung also holding her husband responsible for the fateful night, and the young son Giho was regularly hazed at school because of his parents' mistake. Although Ungyung did return to her family after some time, she eventually took her own life in a desperate effort to get rid of the guilt and trauma from the incident. Sangjun also lost his sanity following this, and he had to be admitted at a mental health facility. Young Giho was even more affected by it, as the added humiliation from his classmates led him to take sleeping pills in an attempt to commit suicide. After growing up, he refused to keep in touch with Sangjun, probably believing that his father had not done enough for the family during the time. Giho grows up to be a social outcast, and he is infuriated by the fact that Hyang Chol, who had indirectly destroyed his whole family, still receives attention from the media because of his psychopathic personality. Incidentally, Giho had seen Hyang Chol carry the senseless body of a woman into his room at the motel on the night of the murder, but he had not told this to anyone ever. In this sense, Giho acted like a frog from the previously mentioned saying too, just like Yong Ha, but the suppressed guilt and anger eventually spilled out. Moving back to the now abandoned motel, Giho planned to kill Hyang Chol, and he got the help of Sang Jun's best friend Jung Do in this matter. Finally, when Hyang Chol is allowed to make a special visit to the hospital to meet his dying mother, Giho executes his well prepared plan and kills the murderer as revenge for his parents' misery. After the incident, Yong Ha figures out that Giho was the perpetrator in the strange murder case, but he refuses to report this to the police, this time consciously choosing to do so because he supports the young man's action. How did Songa die? At the end of The Frog, Songa manages to bring Yoo-seon to the holiday rental with false information about her father Yong Ha, getting into an accident, and then holds her captive inside a suitcase. Songa clearly keeps Usan alive only to use her as a bargaining chip against Yong Ha, knowing well that he would do anything to save his daughter. Yong Ha agrees to write off the house in Songa's name, just as she had hoped, but his situation is helped by the clever police officer Yoon Bo Min. When Bo Min saw Songa buy suspiciously large jars of bleach and other products used to clean up a crime scene, she started to doubt her intentions. Knowing that Songa was living at Yonga's holiday rental, probably in some unlawful manner, she waited on the road to catch the man and question him. Therefore, right before his final confrontation with the killer, Yonga told Bowman everything about his troublesome guest and his intentions. The police force finds and rescues Yu Son, and then later also finds the body of Kim Son Tae, which could be used to arrest and punish Songa. But the situation has another twist. Songa's husband, Ha Ji Shik, had recently been released from prison, and upon realizing that she had murdered his son, he wanted his own revenge. At the end of the Netflix K series The Frog, Bowman is unable to arrest Songa, as she is killed by her vengeful husband, Jay Shik, who is then arrested. Although Songa's crimes technically go unpunished in the end, Yong Ha is finally able to get rid of her from his life. Usan and her husband eventually move into the holiday rental, and Yong Ha often spends time with his loving family. Bowman also recovers from her injuries and she even tracks down and meets Giho, revealing that she too had figured out that he had killed Hyang Chol, but she too refuses to take any action against him. At the very end, Yong Ha and Giho become friends as they both understand each other's decisions in life, for they had been the frogs who finally acted out against injustice. In certain ways, Yong Ha wanted to take the violent route, like Giho, as is apparent from the many imaginary scenes of him killing Songa. Him and all other central characters are heard wondering, at the beginning of each episode, whether an injustice without any witness of it should be considered an injustice. And in the end, both Yong Ha and Giho realize that such injustices are crimes too. Bo Min and Yong Ha do decide to keep Giho's crime a secret though, but that is solely because of the injustice that he and his family had faced in the hands of Hyang Chol in the first place. Thank you for watching this video and do share your thoughts about the frog in the comment section below. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your daily dose of cinema and series. See you in the next one and for the time being we're signing off. Bye.